Hello, welcome to a GibbsCam demonstration. This demonstration is for tombstone management. Uh, basically with GibbsCam, for tombstone machining, we focus on one part, not all the parts. We basically machine the one part in the exact order we want all the parts to be machined. So we don't focus on all the coordinate systems, all the fixturing, just one of the parts. To find our tools like we think we would like them and then verify if they work out. Now, in the cordon systems that we machined in, we had the top view, we had one compound hole looking down through the angled side, we had the right side, and a second compound angled hole. Once we created all our CSs and machined in them, they're placed in the order that we want, and we simply just set up the tombstone management dialogs. In plugins for TMS, we have to set up the stock and fixtures. My stock body is here, and we say stock and get to see what we had it set for. We have to set for two parts in Y, 14 and a half inches, four Bs, 90 degree indexes. If I say I only wanted to do two at 180 and say set it, you see these little yellow square boxes. Those are the stock bodies that will be uh, visually shown. So setting it up for multiple parts is literally just a couple clicks. And with the fixtures that I have here, I have fixture, and we just have one of them, but they're on four Bs. Once that's done, we go to the plug-in menu to set up the TMS. It opens up this dialog. We're going to do standard layout, two parts in Y, 14 and a half inches a piece, four Bs, going to zigzag the B axes. We simply just tell it to group by tool and CS. You can double click in here and edit the group rights. Of course, we're going to be doing multiple parts, retracting uh, at the same B indexing. Uh, for new B indexes, we'll come out 12 inches. The output for the code, we generally use a sub with a group. So each one of these groups will be nested in a sub. Therefore, at the machine, the user can simply make one edit and all the parts will be updated. The CS operation layout has to be uh, laid in here, so we, we open up the layout operations. We get the B, click it, and say get the B, and it throws it in there. So we just load the CS, get the uh, position, tell it to do all instances. You can do partials as well, and maybe not do all the sides. You can also use this for a filter, so if you wanted a, a big mill just to cut the tops of multiple parts, you can just use ACS to make that tool path until it just do the first instance, and it doesn't do all of them. And then we have them all laid in there. We're pretty much done, and we're off to the races. We can put it in the simulation mode and hit the CPR. Now, the CPR with simulation and machine simulation, we can actually display the whole machine tool. You can load, you know, multiple machines. So if we wanted to put this in a different machine, we could simply load it in there. I'll slow it down a little bit and say play. As it goes off drilling the holes, and as she's drilling here, it's going um, zigzagging back and forth. And when the tool changes, it's it starts where it left off if it can. If not, it'll index to where it needs to. We can show the time or the op numbers. And these ops that we're cutting right now, it's using the same operations over and over again, just recalling them up. And we're roughing these faces right now. It's going to index over to the 90 degree side after this, because that's the next operation up. And it machines these faces and roughs it, changes tools, comes back, and then repeats in reverse order to finish it. That's the zigzag B axis indexing. You'll notice as she's moving, it's going to be moving an X and a Y and a B axis at the same time. By doing this, we eliminate a move and optimize the uh, operation cycle time. <coughs> Excuse me. The cycle time can be displayed in our rendering uh, palette here. And this will give us a runtime for all the parts. Under our window menu, we have an operation summary, which gives us the one part cut time. So you can get a uh, pretty good plan of attack for how long all these parts are going to take. And when we post the code for the tombstone management part, we use a special post for tombstone management that'll all put all the fixture offsets, 
based on the machine tools need or the user's uh, preferences. Uh, tombstone management is definitely a, a very good tool for multiple tombstone parts because the complexity is really minimized. We can view the whole layout of the land of the, of the tools and the fixturing. So if there is something that would be a, a, a issue, we'll catch it here. Collision detection will detect all collisions if the housing of the spindle hits something, or if a tool holder rubs, or if a tool holder even goes through the part and hits a fixture. It'll alert us and let us know. You can always stop it, single block, and look really how close am I getting to a, a fixture or a part. Um, it's much easier uh, fixing it here than out at the machine tool. Uh, tombstone management is definitely uh, an advancement for saving time in production. Um, it definitely will change the way you work and think. Uh, anyways, I, I hope you enjoyed the little uh, presentation of tombstone management. Um, if you do have any questions, give us a call and hope you have a great day. Thank you.